Sylvia, are you, are you bullish on next year? Hi, Wolf. Happy early New Year. Um, I, I am bullish on next year. And, you know, I would agree with Mike. I think these days sort of matter a little bit less. We're sort of at the end of the year. It's a holiday. Liquidity wanes a little bit. But, you know, we have a strong economy. ISM numbers are, are looking good. Chicago PMI, which is a weather vane for, you know, the the general um, materials for the country, was positive today, 63 versus 50, which is a growth story. Jobs numbers good. 70 percent of GDP is the consumer. The consumer is spending your last guest, Jared um, Bernstein, mentioned that, you know, there's this epic amount of household savings and that's likely to go into the market and back into the economy. So I, I think that there's a lot of positive sides to the market next year. Chip stocks have had a strong run uh, to finish out the year, but one company is now warning of supply chain chain issues, excuse me, in China. Josh Lipton's got those details for us. Hi, Josh. So, well, if Micron is falling in today's trade, the chip maker out with some news for investors saying that COVID-related closures in a Chinese city would impact its DRAM production, though the company expects to be able to meet most of its customer demand. Checked in with Matt Bryson over at Wedbush. He covers the name. At this point, he says this could actually end up being a positive for the company. Historically, pricing matters more than volume. If customers now think there could be more shortages coming, they might end up paying more for Micron chips. Having said that, he does rate Micron a neutral peers like Western Digital, he argues, are more attractively valued. Back to you all. Josh, thanks so much for that. Your take, Sylvia, on the space and, and Micron as well? Yeah, so I'm actually super excited about the space, Micron and um, NVIDIA also. That's another player here. You know, Micron has done some great product development work. They're going to be a major player in memory and 5G, which will also be part of the metaverse. Um, and then you have companies like NVIDIA, which might have some chip shortages too, but in the future they have GPUs, which will increase speed and um, 3D you know, usage in the metaverse. They're part of NVIDIA Drive for EV, edge computing, 5G. So I just think that the runway here is just so massively huge. And on days like this, where you get this type of news, you know, these are names that I like to buy on the dip and, and think about holding for the next five to 10 years. I just think that the um, performance and addressable market is, is, is massive for these types of stocks.